everyone, today we're working on our engine. We're gonna be doing a valve lash adjustment. Uh, we got about 150,000 miles on the truck. At about 150,000 miles, you should do your valve lash on a diesel. Well, this diesel, the Cummins. Uh, it depends on the engine, some a lot sooner, some a lot later. The newer engines tend to um, go a lot longer before needing valve lash adjustments, but uh, valve lash is uh, very important in a diesel. It, 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 it depends on, uh, it's very tight tolerance as to how, how the engine performs. So today we're gonna check it and and uh, first step is removing the valve cover here. Now this first part to come off is the um, filter, actually. This is the, the crankcase ventilation filter. You gotta go ahead and remove this before you can get at the get at the valve cover. As it turns out the valve cover is a little more difficult to get off. There are a couple bolts way in the back that give you very little clearance to get at. And we're also trying to do this keeping the valve cover really clean. Once we, once we take this apart, you want the top of your engine to be as clean as possible. You don't want to get anything in there. So hopefully we can get this apart pretty easily once we take this out. We also need to take apart some electrical connections and some other breather lines here. Once we, uh, once we get this all taken apart, all the bolts out. So we got all the electrical connections and everything apart. Now it's a matter of just lifting this sucker up and out of here. Hopefully. There it is. There's the valves. Ah. Well, there we are. That's the top of the engine. So um, this is the intake valve and that's the exhaust valve. And now we need to position the engine so that we've got the appropriate, um, the appropriate cylinders lined up. We're going to take a feeler gauge and uh, make sure that these are adjusted to the right position. These nuts here, you see that, there's a hex inside there. We're going to loosen that nut, put the hex in there, and then we can make adjustments to that rocker arm. And we'll do that all the way back, except it looks really difficult to get all the way back there. Especially without getting dirt in the engine. Challenge accepted. The engine's got a mark on the vibration dampener. Um, here, I'll grab that and show you guys. It says TDC on it. Can you see that there? Let me zoom in. TDC. Okay, come on, focus right there. We need to align that with the very top of this vibration dampener and once we do that um, we're going to we're going to be able to figure out which valves are loose and then we can adjust those valves. So I'm using a 5 8 inch ratchet and I'm just going to slowly turn the engine. Oh never mind. Take two. What size am I using? 15. All right. So I'm using a 15 millimeter ratchet to just slowly turn this engine over. And you gotta go real slow because it compresses and then loses compression. You gotta keep on doing this. And coming around, here comes your TDC mark. You see it? Not yet. Okay, I see it. All right, is it straight on? You need to go one way or the other. Um. You don't have to film the whole thing. Okay, so we've got our engine at top dead center. Uh, now we're gonna take our feeler gauges here, which are really thin strips of metal. Should you show them to us? Really thin strips of metal. And we're going to shove them underneath the rockers to determine <clears throat> what size we need to um, tighten them down to. So there's point zero. One zero. All right, so I've got my feeler gauge here underneath the um, the rocker arm in between the valve and, and the rocker. If you come over here and look at it, you can see it's really loose in there. I can kind of pull back and forth. There's really no drag on it at all. So here we go. We're gonna loosen this this 14 millimeter nut. not.
There we go. All right, needed a bigger ratchet. So we've got this loose now. So we're gonna go ahead and put our feeler gauge back in there. That tightened it way too much until there's just a little bit of drag. A little bit more. Doesn't take much. All right, there, I feel a little bit of drag in there. On it, so that's pretty good right there. All right, what's close to 14? So I still feel the tension. So now, since I don't have a box wrench, which you really need to do, you need to be able to hold this in position while you tighten that. I didn't, I don't have the right size, so I'm just gonna see if we can, uh, if we can do it like this without, yep, we still have a little bit of drag, and that feels pretty good. So then we're just gonna tighten this one back down, and cylinder one intake is done. So we just wrapped up half the engine, um, and they're very tight tolerances, but what's more important than even getting it completely uh, perfect tolerance-wise is to make sure you have consistency across all your cylinders. So now that we've got half of it done, we're going to rotate the engine 360 degrees, it's going to change the whole valve pattern, and then we're going to, once again, re, uh, redo the other, or not redo, but do the other half of the engine's uh, valve flash. I don't know if you can see him move, we're going so slow. You can see that one moving. Oh my gosh. I can hear the compression and the cylinders hissing. All right, we're three. 50% of the way. All right, here it comes, hon. You see it yet? Oh, uh, yep. All right, we're on the last and most difficult one, which is the six exhaust. At this point, I can't even see it, but I can feel it, and that's why they call them feeler gauges. So, we are almost done. I don't really have any recommendations on how to do this any easier. I guess you just gotta get up on top of the engine and reach. All right, finally almost done here. I finally found a position that's kind of comfortable. You kind of lay down on the engine here. Makes it a lot easier. Just keep your shirt and stuff out of there, of course. And I am feeling good down there. So, all right, that is a wrap. Here we go. All right, there you go, she's all back together. We'll give you a little update once we drive it a bit and see if there's any noticeable difference. Uh, sometimes you can get, I guess, a little more power, a little more fuel economy out of it, but regardless, uh, you know, it's something you're supposed to do anyway, so. There you go. That's how you change uh, or adjust the uh, valve lash on a Cummins 6.7 engine, and uh, it's pretty much the same uh, once you actually, you know, get to the valves on different engines as well. Feeling it with the feeler gauge and tighten it up. Um, but there you go. It's the next day after doing the valves. We've been towing for about an hour now. We're towing into the mountains, and we have a noticeable difference. The engine is quieter, and there's definitely a bit of a power gain. Uh, probably because we've tightened the valves just a tiny bit, so we're taking more advantage of the camshaft, getting more airflow and exhaust uh, out of the engine. So definitely something worth doing to your engine, and uh, it wasn't too bad, so I'd say uh, it's a do-it-yourself project.